I am so thrilled. For a topic like this, you know, improving your reading habit, you have actually logged in to spend this hour with me. I thought nobody would be interested because reading has become so outdated, no? But I always have that optimism that let the world go in a different direction. There will always be a few people who want the road less traveled. And the road less traveled goes with reading. It is something which, you know, nothing else can compare with that. Nothing else can give you that satisfaction, that thrill, that fulfillment which reading can give you. Let me see, let me you know, tell you a few things. How did human beings, who are definitely not the strongest and the most powerful species, how is it that we overcame from the Stone Age and from that prehistoric era? How did human beings manage to become complete masters of the world? Today, there's not a single species left in this world which is even a threat to human beings. We have overcome everybody and come out. It started, as you remember, as your whole history will tell you, the caveman started putting drawings in the caves. That is our oldest form of communication with our ancestors. They knew that if they have to communicate, if they have to connect to others, they started drawing in the caves and those drawings many of which were preserved became the means for communication from one person who left the cave and went away and another person who came to seek the shelter in that cave then the next generation these people who had done the drawings passed away the next generation came in and they saw these drawings and they learned something from it slowly those drawings started taking the shape of alphabets and before you know it we had alphabets today as you know there are alphabets in hundreds of uh, languages all over the world each one is unique by itself but the alphabet gave us the means to now start communicating with people not only those who are in front of us not only those who are somewhere in our vicinity, but people who are far away, people who will be coming after us. And once we started spreading knowledge through the written word, we started rising above all the other species. And then, of course, the printing press came in so that we could do mass communication and then all the other means of mass communication came in. But it is primarily the written word which has brought us where we are. And sad to say, today, we, things have taken a reverse trend. In the new generation, they are moving further and further away from the reading habits. Attention span of the younger generation is going down. They want to see everything in visual form. They don't want to take the trouble of reading something. And this, is my anxiety, this is my concern, that if we do not reverse this trend, if we do not inculcate the reading habit in uh, people, you will find that the next generation will lose out on what we have gained, not over a few generations, but over a few millennia, over thousands and millions of years, what we have slowly gained and come up till here. We are now going in the reverse uh, direction. I want us to know that firstly, even though the written word is so, so, so useful and so good for us, do not forget that between one fourth and one third of the population of the world cannot properly read and write. Their education is so minimal that if any of those people want to read a book, a manual, a novel, an instruction book, a book of uh, spirituality, they don't have that ability to read. 
and you are the fortunate ones who come in the other two thirds of humanity. You have received a good education. Today, reading for you is such a simple task. Just open a book casually and start reading it. You don't even feel the strain. You don't have to struggle. You don't have to look for the meaning of words. Your vocabulary is large enough. Then you have such a great asset which has been handed down to you through the generations. Why are we giving it up? Why are we losing out on something which is already there as a great asset to uh, us? There is a proverb which says, if you don't use it, you lose it. Any skill, any habit which you don't use at all. Supposing you learned how to ride a bicycle. But for years and years, you don't use a bicycle at all. What happens after many, many years or decades? If you want to get onto the cycle, you have to start all over again. Same thing with any skill. And the same thing with reading. If you neglect your reading habit now, believe me, the day will come when you will lament it, when you will find it so difficult even to read something which is so essential and so important for you. Okay, I do agree that 55% of communication intake is visual. The visual communication always overrides the written word. I agree with that. And history has proven that to us. For example, one means of mass communication down to the remotest villages and the you know, illiterate people was the radio. Almost 100 years back, we got All India Radio. And radio started broadcasting on shortwave, which was reachable right into the remotest villages. Even when there was no electricity, people got batteries, connected it to their uh, radios. Subsequently, they got transistors, which just required small batteries. And they could even carry it around wherever they go. So what happened? The radio became the most important means of communication for people in every part of the country, every part of the world. Rather. And then uh, half 50 years back, we got the TV. The way TV impacted people was unbelievable. In 50 years, what you know, radio could not do in terms of influencing people, within five years, TV was doing it. Again, because of the same reason that visual intake of communication is far more effective than the written word or the spoken word. But what happened? Over a period of time, when we started watching TV, we became what people are referring to as couch potatoes. The TV was being referred to as the idiot box. Why? The radio was never referred to as an idiot box. The radio was always looked upon. It got you news, it got you songs, it got you music, it got you spiritual discourses, whatever you wanted, it was there on the radio. The same thing was being given in a visual form through TV. And yet, people started calling it the idiot box because when you get mesmerized by the visual part of things, your imagination, your creativity, and your thinking takes a backseat. You have now become a slave to the basics of what the TV is trying to convey to you. And we went through one whole generation of parents who were so upset that my child is all the time watching TV. I don't know how to get him away from it. As I always say, you know, that cycle takes a round turn and comes back. Today, no parent is worried about the child watching too much TV because children don't watch TV. TV has become so boring for them. They've got the social media. They've got their smartphones. They've got their laptops and tablets. 
the TV is out. But yet, what are we relying on? We are relying on the visual media. And if you have noticed, if somebody has an excellent program, very informative and produced in a very, very scientific and a very uh, creative manner, and they put it up, the number of viewers are minuscule. Somebody makes a video clip of 90 seconds and puts it up on social media. And before you know it, there are X million people who are watching it and forwarding it. Why is that happening? Because we are looking for shortcuts. Because slowly our attention span is going down. From the time when we used to read a book, try to visualize, try to create the image of what the author is telling us, it came to us in visual form. Now even that has become boring. Where are we going to be headed if we continue like this? We are talking so much today about artificial intelligence. I'm really happy we have made so much of scientific progress. But what about the real intelligence? Are we going to rely only on the artificial intelligence? Are we going to become robots? Are we going to be you know, relying totally on data sciences and machine learning and robotics and all these things? What happens to the human brain? What happens to our own thinking? What happens to our own aspirations and our uh, uh, frustrations? So, my message today is, please start building up the reading habit. And if you are already a reader, my hearty congratulations. Please increase your reading habit. Whatever reading that you are doing now, Give it an incremental increase, 5%, 10%, 15% more, and see the joys of that. So what, you know, I would suggest is, number one, be a role model to the young, younger generation. There's no point in telling the youngsters, you must read, you people don't read at all, you're always stuck to your mobile, etc. unless you can show them the joys of reading. So I always request people, if you are an adult and if you are living in a family or if you are concerned about the younger generation, talk about books which you have read and which you have enjoyed. Come on to the dinner table and say, hey, last night, you know, I was reading right up to 11.30. I didn't even realize the time because I was reading this, this, this book. And it was so fascinating. It took me into a completely different world. And I started visualizing based on what the author had written. And there is so much that I learned from it. And if possible, read out one paragraph from there, which could be of interest to others. That's it. Such simple ways. If there is a couple, if you want to improve your relationship with each other, and if you want to communicate better with each other, talk about what you have read. Start reading something and start discussing it. And if you can discuss that in front of youngsters, children, all the more better. Okay, now what do we do with children? Let me also give you a few very practical tips on the, you know, how do you go about the uh, thing. You're all aware that uh, this generation of children are not doing much of reading, right? Even their textbooks and this and that which they have to read, they are so bored and they are so fed up. We are coming across children who are saying that instead of reading the whole textbook, I will just Google the topic and I'll get some inputs and I, that is enough. I'll write down in the uh, exam. But there is some wisdom in reading the entire textbook, right? Now, unfortunately, most of the textbooks are boring, firstly. And secondly, they do not connect to real life. So one responsibility as adults that we have towards the younger generation is to show them how we connect this textbook, this reading, this subject 
to real life. Make it a continuous exercise. The other is start when children are very small. As I have told you and you will agree with me, the visual impact is far greater than the written impact. So let's say you have a small child and what you do is you take a small little book like this. Lipo goes to a party. Now you see this Lipo looks so nice, pleasing, whatever it is. And you open this book, you will see that there is very little text. There are three, four lines and there's a lot of picturesque. There are trees. In one of the trees, there's an owl peeping out. And here is Lipo running forward. As you keep turning the pages, you will find so many things happening, which you know you can start reading out even to a child who cannot read. Start reading out to the child. Lipo went and sat in the garden. Now Creaky Crocodile smelled the food. He smelled the cake. Tell the child to visualize how the smell comes. What smell do you remember? Can you smell a chocolate? Can you smell an ice cream? Can you smell some hot cooking which is going on in the kitchen? That's how you start you know, connecting. Start moving on to various such books. Here's another one. Lots of visuals and very little of text. As the child learns how to read, encourage the child just to read this one or two lines. I've got a nose like a furry puri cat, soft or cuddly as that. Talk it over as a rhyme, do whatever you can. It goes on. Connect it up, for example. Here is one which shows about day, play, and night fight. There are messages of life which come in these type of uh, uh, books. They're all available so freely, so easily. And then move on to where the child can actually start reading. Shall we cut the cake now? Ask the mother. Bobby, come and cut the cake, she said. And then this happened and that happened. And no, mother, you cut the cake, please, said Bobby. And there is the mother, there is Bobby, and the story goes on and on. Eventually, you should be able to bring a child to start reading some very interesting things. Even if you have never read or if you have given up years and decades ago, please go back to these very interesting stories. Akbar, Birbal, uh, which is the other one? Krishna Devaraya. Uh, Tenali Ramakrishna. There are so many of them. Mullah Nasruddin. And slowly what you do is you will see you have more of text, but you still have some visual. Here is the visual to connect what the text is saying to this picture. The child looks at the picture, reads another paragraph, again looks at the uh, picture, and that's how it goes on. Ha. Ah. Madhvi says, I already made it a point to read my children's textbook, read all English and Hindi stories. It was a great learning experience for me. And I was always updated what they were reading and connecting. That's all that we need to do. Regardless of your age, regardless of who all are there in your family, Panchatantra, yes, yeah, Suman, that's wonderful. What vast treasure of knowledge you get through those uh, uh, storybooks. Even for us as adults, please remember that. People who are facing corporate challenges, people who are facing difficulties with bosses or customers or whatever, it is even they can learn certain uh, uh, things. Ask yourself a simple question. Why is it that children, you know, enjoy reading things uh, like these tinkle comics or panchatantras or any of these things and why is it that they hate reading their textbooks 
Jatak Katha, yes, Navina, that's also very nice. So we have this vast treasure. Start connecting them back to the textbooks and the serious uh, reading. Once you can do that, you will be doing a great favor to your child. And do not connect it to marks, please. It has nothing to do with marks. It is to do with making your child competent to handle a lot of issues in life. If your child in this current generation can develop the reading habit. And by doing so, you know what? As you grow older, you will realize at some point that you become less mobile. You don't step out of the house as much as you used to do when you were younger. You have lesser and lesser friends to you know, sit and chat uh, with. There are so many activities which you used to do. Maybe you used to like being part of some club or going to some temple or something and you will find over a period of time as age catches up with you, you start limiting those. And that is the time when your reading habit will take you through. Do not succumb to Netflix and Prime, Amazon and all that. Please try and keep away from it. Because that's another version of the idiot box. It mesmerizes you. It holds your attention. It is almost like getting drunk. And then you lose all your senses. Whereas when you are reading a book, you have so many advantages. Let's see what are the advantages of books. I just made a small list of it, which Mira has converted into a slide. Just a few tips. What are the advantages of books and of reading? Firstly, they don't need battery charging and all that, right? They are one of those last things left over which don't require batteries and charging and stuff like that. They do not need any maintenance or annual maintenance contract or calling the fellow and saying, today I opened the book, but nothing is visible. So please come and set it right. They do not require software upgrades. There is no such thing as version 1.0, 2.0, or 3.0 of a book. I know books which were written 50 years and 75 years back, and they are still relevant today. I know books which were written 200 years back and they are still relevant uh, today. You don't have to pay rentals like you pay for various other things for your mobiles and this and that every month. You have to keep paying here. There is nothing. You can carry them anywhere. If the book is not too big, you can stuff it in your bag or in your pocket. They can be dried even if they get wet. Your mobile phone, if it gets wet, it's had it. But if your book you carry it in the rain and it gets wet carefully, put it back and dry it and it's good as new. You can make notations, you can highlight certain uh, points. There's no copyright on reading others' books. You don't have to have authorized version and pirated version and, or something. A book is a book and it's available to anybody who wants to read that. It doesn't require any instruction manual as to how to open the book, how to turn pages or whatever. Uh, you know. It does not require electricity, UPS. Even if you're in the dark, you can just put a torch on your book and uh, read it. And don't forget, I don't know how many still have that habit all time. You get some nice flower, you put it in the pages of the book and it gets compressed and it remains there for a long, long, long time. Just a few of the uh, uh, advantages, right? Now, finally, before we end the first part of it, let me give you, you know, a few uh, advantages. Uh, no, so a few, uh, you know, methods. But before that, let me tell you that reading constantly also improves your concentration at work. It improves your attention span. It improves your creative thinking because words force you to visualize something which they don't give you in the video uh, uh, form. You get the feel of the book. Touch is one of the greatest you know, pleasures of human beings. Touching a book, holding it in your hand, turning the pages, these are some of the things. Now, how do you actually improve your reading uh, habit? 
look for books on your favorite topics there are always today it's not at all difficult to you know find books on favorite topics anything that interests you you're a sports person you're a music person you're a, you're a gardening loving person start looking for books in your topic and then you will find that interest going up i have a simple habit i want to share with you i always keep one serious and one light book let's say end of the day i finish my dinner and i spend the last one hour in bed reading some days i'm still fresh and bright i take up the serious book and read it for one hour and a half hour i make notations i stop think all that i do sometimes i'm very tired don't feel like reading so don't read take up the serious book take up the light book and start reading it some joke book some chicken soup for the soul some of these which i mentioned to you know that akbar birbal or those type of short short stories read it for a few minutes but keep that habit going by doing this have books with large font if you're not a very avid reader sometimes when you come across a book with a small font no it puts you off so try as, at least till you develop a very strong habit try to have books with strong bigger uh, fonts regardless of how tired you are make it like a ritual that i will read at least one or two pages before i end the uh, day family i mentioned to you dinner time any gap in between maybe in the beginning of the day or end of the day if family can read together one person is given the responsibility that what you read yesterday out of that come and read out one paragraph to everybody be a role model to children and then you will be able to increase their studies and so many other things these are some of the very very basic uh, things but at the same time let me tell you the joys of uh, uh, reading there have been occasions when let's say it's a holiday and it's a hot day by late afternoon suddenly the clouds come and it starts raining if you have this habit which i have of going and sitting in a balcony or next to a big window if it overlooks nature nothing like it if you are fortunate enough to have such a balcony or a, such a window but if, even if it doesn't just sit somewhere where you can look out where your vision can go high look at the sky look at the clouds look at tall trees far away beyond the buildings and take an interesting book take a hot cup of tea and start reading it it will be a moment which you will cherish i tell you years later you will be able to uh, remember renu says google is a boon you can get a lot of information on fingertips yes renu i agree with you 100% but do not forget that we have also entered into the era of drip d r i p it is an acronym for data rich insight poor data is today being thrust on you google is giving you millions of sites when you want to read up any you know, type of uh, you know, topic but how do you find which is right whereas books you see the author you see who has commented about the author you see the background of the author see the publisher reputed publishers don't take up books which are not credible so the moment you know that it's a good publisher you know that there is some sense to it if it is a known author or even if it's an unknown author but when you read the profile of the author you know what that person's background is and what the person is capable of and then you read it you are sure of getting things you know when i mentioned to you that you know you can take that hot cup of tea and relax i feel i need a minute off to take my hot cup of tea and take a break and i will leave you in the good hands of purnil for the next one or two minutes
I'm on. Yes. Good morning. I uh, thought that you know I'll take this opportunity of uh, sharing uh, the opportunity which I had to inculcate uh, reading habit in two very important people in my life. One was uh, my son, and this I'm talking 25 years back. But nonetheless, even when he was just a year old, I had brought you know books for him which were very uh, you know as Ali was just mentioning also to you all very picture risk, uh, rich and the matter was very less and what i felt was one of the unique things was those books had something which they say that attracts children very well which is rhyme rhythm repetition this small small you know um, uh, lines in that something like um, uh, frog on the log so there is a photograph which just the outline he says hey what is this you turn it it says frog on the log and then there is the other one which says cat on the mat and then there is a book on the hook so you're getting it there is a rhyme there is a nice rhythm to the whole thing and there's repetition frog log book hook you know that kind of a thing and then from there on it's also if you say book on the hook you say hey look a book on the hook you know that's how it goes you say a cat on the mat and then you say fat cat on the mat so that's how what i would do is i would hold him and you know just show him and then i would also you know with the expressions i would say fat cat on the mat so he understands that this is how the you know words are coming out and from there on every day there was a specific time which was kept aside only for reading so he knows that this is my special time because my mama is going to be away from everybody else and whenever she takes this book, there is something very interesting that is happening. And when that happens, he automatically looks forward to that book. He said, my book, my book, you know, that kind of a thing. And um, another uh, thing was with my niece. With my niece, the gap between my son and my niece is around 10, 11 years. For her, I started when she was all of six months. So my, you know, others uh, uh, would tell, so early what she will understand so early what you i said doesn't matter so i would show the picture say of owl and then with my i say see this owl owl so she knows that Acha, this is an owl and that's how it looks you know to the extent i'll go back to my son for a minute and to the extent what used to happen was even when he was just one and a half two years he had no idea of what words were reading and nothing but because he had, he knew it is cat on the mat, frog on the log, he would read it. And people will actually think that, oh, how comes a two-year-old son already knows to read? So that's how it was. For my niece, when I would show her the book, a very interesting thing uh, happened. I would read to her very regularly. And uh, when she was around two, two and a half years, they took her to the zoo. And she actually saw a owl there. And she kept telling her mother, Mama, book, Perry, book, Mama, book. And you know, beta, this is not book, this is owl. And then they were wondering why she constantly telling this Mama, book, Perry, book. So she used to call me Perry, ma. And then they realized that what was happening on a day to day basis, that actually they could see the result of that happening on that day when they took her to the uh, zoo. So it's also very uh, important. There was something which actually struck to me was that if you are a creative person, maybe you can make your own small books. One is you know, that uh, satisfaction of having used your creativity. And the other thing is you can put those kind of words, sentences, pictures, which you think maybe like a theme you want to present to your child age appropriate. And if you have a group of people who can do that, they also learn to exchange these books. So the child also learns in a way, a child learns that, hey, if I want something good, I have to give something good. So there is sharing of books, your creativity uh, comes out. And also, I've realized that all when we meet so many of these youngsters, you can in a way find out that that child whose talk is very essential. And you know, there's a lot of meaning. There is, uh, you know, what do you say in Hindi they call thera when the child is speaking you can kind of infer that you know he has been a reader 
so as they say even if you can't visit places read about them so it gives you focus it gives you attention it makes your conversation you know more essential whenever you know you start as early um, that's my uh, experience that even as early as six months hold the child and show the book and then you know make her look at you and you know with your face expressions when you're speaking to them they understand ah there is something really very nice whenever these books come up i know that i'm getting something which is so interesting for me something which i've learned new and um, i also one more thing which i used to do was i used to pick up books which would give out messages more than morals the very small kids don't understand morals no honesty is the best policy they get a little confused they're not at that age so i would pick up books which would have messages simple messages like to tell a sorry you know to apologize in case you have done a mistake or uh, maybe to keep yourself clean to uh, help others in case they want something maybe a glass of water or something like that the impact if you are lied or if you have criticized someone how does the other person feel so these are all the messages which would come out of those books more than morals so that was something which i thought you know right from uh, that young age or uh, infant age when i started i could see also the results of uh, reading that early and i really feel happy when i uh, see youngsters you know reading books and saying ma let me just finish this one chapter in this novel or in this book very heartening to see that and um, uh, having uh, you know uh, uh, spoken on this i would fail in my duties if i don't tell you that uh, through banjara which is our humble submission to the whole society is that you know that's our con- not submission contribution is that we have a course which is called um, certificate in child and adolescent development reading is one of the ways how we can develop kids in a very fantastic way make them you know ready for the world there are so many different aspects which go into developing children you know seeing them uh, grow Uh, and making them ready for the world uh, ccad is one of the courses which is a online course and along with children if we all want to grow help children help adolescents help the elderly and uh, help everyone around in the society where in a classroom session you can learn with so many different assorted people it could be a lawyer or a chartered accountant or just a 17 year old who is bubbling with life or it could be a 85 year old who is still bubbling with a lot of life is our course which is diploma in counseling skills this course helps you through you know understanding people of different ages and stages of life and helping them out in their emotional well being so along with reading i thought i'll take you a step forward into understanding human beings and um, get as many books make as many books write as many books Enjoy your time. Thank you. Now comes the more interesting part for me, at least, because I get to read what you have written in the chat box. Okay, Purnima says, "Awesome sharing." thank you uh, surekha says very motivating and facilitating purnima thank you renu says to prevent alzheimers you can do a lot of brain teasers like sukodu crosswords etc now you have wordle etc yes yes this was another aspect we were speaking more about children and the younger generation but let me tell you that if you continuously have the reading habit and that curiosity of the mind and if your reading is on a wide range not restricted only to one particular topic some people read only religious book some people read only novel some people read only something on their area of interest try to expand your reading habit so that you are using all parts of the brain and that prevents things like dementia and alzheimers in the uh, old age vishnu says even good books improve cognitive skills and thus keep alzheimers away yes exactly that is what i was uh, saying uh, roshan says thank you for your enlightened and wise thoughts i have joined a reading club 
specially to motivate me to read and read, which I find very difficult. Now, Universe is helping me get good books from the library. Hope this gives me the motivation to read. It will definitely do so. Roshan, there is no doubt about uh, uh, it. Use this as a means to understand that at any stage of life, at any age, at any other occupations and any other things which are keeping you tight down, you may be a very busy homemaker, you may be a busy professional, you may be whatever it is, but you can always find time for reading, isn't it? Yasmin says, thank you, Ali. Me being a part of the book club for the last few months has helped me get into the reading habits. 2022 is a year to inculcate this rich habit. Yes, I wish we could declare 2022 as the year of reading, which is so much needed, isn't it? Madhvi says, I tried my sincere attempt to read books, tell them stories and all, but mobile took my children love mobile and COVID lockdown, everything. I hope, as Ali said, it's cycle that they may come back to books. Yes, Madhvi, but they will not come back unless you put in some efforts. All that I have spoken to in the first half of this program, Start off with being a good role model. Start off with discussing some interesting books that you have read with your family members and your children. Read out one paragraph somewhere with them. Give the, your child a book which is one level below his cognitive ability so that he can read through it smoothly and enjoy it and then come up. Favia says, I started reading Mark Twain very early in my life and I think it has made a huge impact on my personality. Definitely it has, Favia, and we've all seen that in you even more than my family. The dog's tail brings tears to my eyes even to this day after 40 years of first reading it and crying. Also, authors like Scott Peck, Somerset Monk made a huge difference to my way of dealing with challenging situations. These are things, thank you for sharing with us, Farida. These are things which, you know, you have to experience it and see. Nobody can tell you about it and you may say, oh, I'm too old to start reading now. I've given up on the habit. I don't have the time, I get very tired. You can use a hundred you know, excuses, but if you really understand its significance and its benefits, the motivation will come back. Sanjay says courses nowadays provide only ebooks. I'm comfortable reading physical books rather than uh, ebooks, so I end up printing them. Thought I was good. No, not at all, Sanjay. I think that's a very nice thing to. Do because as I was mentioning, when you take a printout, of course, it costs that much of money and effort or whatever it is. But if you have that thing, take a printout, bind it or whatever, put it in a uh, cover. And then when you start reading it, when you hold it in your hands, it is like holding a child or a loved one in your hands. When you turn the page, you feel that you're holding that paper and turning it uh, over. It's very difficult to explain in words what it is. But once you start experiencing it, then you will see the joys and the benefits of it. Renu says, now through ebook reader, we can read any time, though you don't get the feel. doesn't matter. I'm not saying that you have to do it. I'm just, just telling you the advantages of it, that feel of being connected, that feel of you know having that book in your shelf and you pull it out whenever you want. I've got so many favorite authors you know, who I keep in my bookshelf. And suddenly, whenever I want, I pull it out. I go and sit anywhere on the terrace or outside in the garden or somewhere, and I sit and uh, read it. I don't have to carry my laptop or tablet or those things. I don't have to charge it. Navina says, I used to give Panchatantra and such other books as return gifts on my son's birthday and when he was young. That was a very nice thing you've done, Navina. It would have definitely built a little more of the reading habit among all those children who received your uh, uh, Yes. Navneet Kumar Saraf says, apart from reading a book, reading a good newspaper covers really all the aspects of life, particularly editorials are very knowledgeable. Yes, that's another thing which I uh, agree. Religiously, every morning I read two newspapers and barring a few things like maybe sports or business or whatever, most of the other pages, I do give a serious reading to it. Just to expand my horizon of thinking, even if they are not topics of my direct interest, but it expands. That's what we were saying that, you know, even preventing dementia, preventing the atrophying of your brain by using all sides of your brain. Krishna says, nowadays kids subscribe to apps which read the books to them. Even schools have moved to getting recorded lessons for revision. 
will try putting efforts as you mentioned please do mr krishna i think that is very very uh, important it's so much more convenient and easy to have recorded lessons but it is far more beneficial if we pick up the book and start the reading uh, it that's what vishnu agrees every page of a physical book opens a totally new world for uh, uh, me and that as i said only those of us who experience it know about it right navina says nothing could replace the joy of reading a hard cover book i am still not comfortable reading an ebook same here i am not saying that we should resist technology or we should not go into it i know for example of some elderly people who can no longer read the fine print of a book so they have got this e books and they increase the font they increase the brightness uh, and the background uh, brightness so they find it easier to read so you see even for such people who would otherwise be deprived of reading because their eyesight is not good technology is helping them they continue with their reading through uh, e books right Yasmin says, "Yes, sir. We let's dedicate it this year for reading. Banjara has a treasure of good books in the library. Time to make use. We always invite people come and become a member of our library. We have just a small annual fee for it. Nothing more than that. You can take books on a regular basis. Take it home, read it, bring it uh, back. Wherever you have a library, even if you are far away or in some other city." there are definitely libraries still available before even those libraries close down please patronize uh, them there you get a wide variety you pick up a book which somehow you don't connect to after reading 10 pages doesn't matter close it return it to the library you have not invested money in that right roshan says though we have important things to do listening to your every live is more important as we learn a lot from you and from the comments of my friends i need to work more sincerely on my reading habit please do roshan and spread the word be a role model to others as i said when you meet a friend a friend calls you up or you are chatting just mention what you have read i like this 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 i read about this even as mr sir said even a newspaper you know today's newspaper i found this is this or something enlightening which i did not uh, know Krishna also says many of us don't use our mother tongue to read or write. Do you think it's a problem with us only to use English or Hindi? Not at all. I think there is so much, so much of knowledge, of uh, wisdom in each of our Indian languages. Whichever is your mother tongue, whichever is the language you understand, whether it's your mother tongue or not, is also not uh, significant. but whichever language indian language that you know please do not give it up don't stick to english of the uh, time read a little bit uh, at least once in a uh, while my student ifat gave me a wonderful uh, uh, book which she has written a biography of one of her teachers and coincidentally the name of the book is gata jaye banjara she has written a book in hindi and it is so captivating normally i don't read books in uh, hindi though i did study hindi in school the habit has now reduced but when i picked up this book i couldn't get it down till i finished with it and that is the joys that you get you realize that yes you can connect back to the language which you had given up so many years back right farida says in my daycare farida runs a daycare and a uh, preschool so she says in my daycare children started reading books when i told them stories divided into three parts those who were eager to know the ending started picking the book and reading finally they were all borrowing books and brought in their friends as well what a simple but what a creative idea don't you think you put it make the story in three parts tell them the first part get their interest then the next day you give them the second part and then you say if you want to know the ending take the book and read it yourself if the child is very small sit with the child and read it out and show the pictures neeta says yes i do agree as punima said earlier the better for children today i am very happy my both kids have good reading habits i salute all the parents who have given a reading habit to the young generation of uh, today because you have given them a gift which is far superior to any amount of money or assets or whatever else you could have uh, uh, given them 
Naveena says, I love the advantages which you shared of reading the book and also how to inculcate the habit. It was so new in tune with today's age. That's what I keep doing. I mean, I start exploring, I keep pulling out from here and there. It's not that I am such a wise person, but I'm always open to taking in inputs. And a lot of my inputs come from reading, whether it's a newspaper, whether it's books, whether it is anything else. So I keep getting those different uh, uh, you know, things which you can get in different uh, ways. Renu says, I feel children pick up subjects fast when they are taught in mother tongue in early school. Yes, that is a proven fact. Uh, mother tongue as, as a label has now lost its uh, significance, but I would say the language spoken at home. Consider that as your mother uh, uh, tongue. So whichever language you speak, and today we have so many families where different languages are spoken. Maybe the father and mother come from two different languages. Maybe they speak a third common language with each other. <coughs> Maybe they speak a particular language with their parents, whichever language is spoken freely, openly, and regularly at home. And if you can start off by inculcating some sort of habit on the child to also pick up the language, to read about it, to communicate in it, it becomes easier. Then you can you know, take the child more towards English or whatever other language you want to uh, take the uh, children uh, I am a strong believer that if we start, you know, working uh, towards building up our own reading habit, make it a selfish thing. Don't just make it, oh, I have to do it for children, I have to do it for this one or that one. And if you can imbibe the reading habit in others, Rakshana says, I was an ardent reader. Until I moved to Dubai a few years back, but I still try to read whenever I can. Please do that. Get books from somewhere. I don't know how, how and where you can get books in Dubai, but I'm sure there would be some sources somewhere by which you can get even in various other countries, whoever is in whichever country. Even those people who are in small towns earlier, they used to have a lot of problem getting books because they didn't have libraries or they didn't have bookshops. So, Today, that has also been overcome. I know of people who live in very remote places, but they do manage to get their collection of books and read and return and things, uh, you know, which help them to uh, uh, keep up with their reading habit. Navina says, heartfelt gratitude to you and to everyone who shared their ideas of reading a book. I got a lot of wonderful uh, ideas. Yes, that's how we share our ideas with each other. We build up this uh, thing. And that was the whole purpose. I started off in the beginning. Those who joined in late, they're saying that I'm really grateful to those of you who have joined us on this particular topic because it's becoming such an outdated uh, topic. No? Reading habit, what is so great about it? Yeah, when I feel like I read it, people tend to take it a little too casually, I feel. But those are the people who have not understood the significance of the reading habit. And that's why I thought doesn't matter how many people log in today I never bother about numbers but i do want to make sure that whenever we have genuine people who are interested who are at least open to the idea of listening log into a program like this listen for 15 minutes if you feel that no this man is talking nonsense you can log out and go back to watching your netflix or your amazon prime or whatever is more entertaining to you but do not you know Give up these basic things. This is not something which I am trying to propound like a guru. It is the wisdom of so many people who have said this. Vishnu says, can't imagine a world without books. We can't learn everything by trial and error. Exactly that's what I'm saying. Firstly, as I mentioned to you, be thankful that you are educated. There are so many people who are not educated at all. Through our reading club, when we were saying try to inculcate the reading habit in uh, uh, children, I remember Roshan sharing that uh, she told her, you know, the uh, fruit supplier or the uh, domestic worker's child that would you like to read? And the child said, I know only Kannada. And she said, okay, I'll get you a Kannada book. But even that Kannada book, that child could not read because nobody has ever inculcated that reading habit in uh, him, he's already grown up to whatever number of years he is. 
and today even when somebody is giving him a book in his own mother tongue which he has obviously studied to some extent whichever class he has gone to but the reading habit is not there i think we owe it to such people isn't it who are being deprived of the basics of uh, reading navina says i think not only in family but with friends we can talk about books and thereby build bonding and research yourself actually this is very interesting i wrote a small little uh, book which is exactly 16 tiny pages here is it i am a book i teach but you should be willing to learn small little book of 16 pages you can see how fast you could uh, you know read uh, the thing and you can literally finish it off in some minutes not hours and among our list of books we keep this and we keep offering it to uh, people but you will be amazed to say people don't like to invest you know it's very expensive it costs 10 rupees and there are very few people who want to invest 10 rupees even to understand what is the significance of a book and what does it teach me but we continue i know as i told you i never look at numbers if i find five people or 50 people who are willing to read this particular small book and benefit from it or spread the message i am more than happy that's why i write also in these books you know you that uh, Uh, book publishers generally have, to have that all rights reserved by the author nobody should copy this in any form and this and that and it is illegal and you know what i write no rights reserved please copy it reproduce it share it with anybody you want remove my name and put your name on it it doesn't matter to me the purpose is that the message should spread people should get in that is our main and uh, Uh, mission in life how does it matter who gets the credit for it right renu says audio books is a real boon you can save lot of time and get to know more information than your yes that is another thing which i found a lot of people do benefit from uh, it when you are driving when you are traveling when you are doing some other work where your mind is not occupied and yet you know you don't have the particular book if you can just plug in your earphones and listen to an audio book i think that's another alternative which you should keep in mind there are lots of audio books are available all over the place you can convert it into audio books also it's not very difficult but if you can do that also if you're a person who travels a lot let's say you travel by train now you're sitting in a train for hours and hours and you have not brought a particular book or the train is shaking and it's not so easy the lighting is not good or whatever it is there you are you put on your earplugs and you listen to it and it doesn't matter if other people are talking or making a noise or the train is making a noise you can happily you know sit and listen to the audio book <laughs> figure says i am very happy when someone steals my books written by ali i know that life will improve definitely and as my contribution to you farida whenever somebody steals a book of mine please let me know i will replace it free of cost to you that's how the message goes that's how we start moving one by one towards uh, you know various things trubina says thank you learned a lot with your innovative idea let's all keep learning that's all you know there as long as there is life there is growth there is evolvement there is a lot of learning to be done we can continue to remain young throughout the our life even if you live up to 100 years this reading habit will take you through and ensure that your sunset years come out to be very very wonderful so with that we come to the end of the uh, hour and as you know we are there every saturday at 11 o'clock sharp you are most welcome and sunita will now put up the topic for next saturday what we are going to be talking about next uh, uh, saturday i want you to be aware of it think about it and spread the word so those who are interested in the topic will you know say oh there's a talk on this this uh, uh, this so 23rd of uh, april discovering compulsive liars people who are compulsive liars you will come across such people every now and then 
what do you do and how do you deal with people who develop this habit of becoming compulsive liars. We have been doing a lot of research on it. I'll find out and then we'll talk about it. In the meanwhile, we have got on 21st Thursday, we have a classroom session free and open to everybody where you can join us. Who can make us happy and how? So those of you who are in Bangalore and who have time to spare, please drop in on Thursday morning, share a cup of tea with us and spend an hour with us and learn who can make us happy and how. Thank you and bye-bye.